Hey, it's John with the Per Cut, and today I'm going to teach you how to finish off the drywall on the inside of the closet. Alright, so here's a closet that I built out at the end of last year for a customer. And we decided on the inside to save a little space and to save a little time and money that we were just going to leave it open on the inside because you could use that for a shelf and it saved a little bit of space for this outlet down here but today we're going to go ahead and finish off sheetrock in this the first thing you're going to do is take your measurement for your width and we've got 45 and a quarter okay so i've got my sheetrock laid out on my little workbench here and to mark your 45 and a quarter inches, you're simply gonna pull your tape out to 45 and a quarter. Pull the 45 and a quarter at the factory edge of the sheetrock and just scribe it down. And so now you've got your scribe mark and you always wanna make sure that you're cutting it not with the edge with the bevel because you want to use the bevel for your joints so you can get a cleaner tape line and a better finish and then you could just fold it and it snaps right down cut the other side and the next thing you're going to do is measure for your door opening Cutting out your door opening can be a little trickier. So I made my scribes and then I went ahead and marked my corners with the pencil. So the next step will be to cut it out with the razor blade along your scribe marks. And then what you're gonna do is from the corner, just cut diagonally. And then that way you're able to break out the center point. So now I'll show you how I'm going to try and pop that out without damaging the part that I need. Once you get some of it free, you're just going to want to cut the cardboard backing. I did wind up having one of the legs tear off on me. So we're gonna need an extra tape and spackle line. It's not the end of the world. It just makes a little bit more work. But as you can see, the other side came out just fine. The next step is to get your impact gun or your drywall gun, drill, whatever your method is. So you can go ahead and put the drywall screws and get the piece of sheetrock up. The white paper side is going to face out, or you're going to want to countersink your screw heads just a little bit. They do make special tips for that if you're worried about going too far and sinking your screw all the way in. And your screw is about eight inches apart it is going to be good to hold the sheetrock in place. And on this one, the screw didn't want to seat all the way in. I must have hit one of the screws that was anchoring the stud into the other wall. And so you just back it out, put it in a different location, and then spackle over that hole. Not a big deal. Where I had this downward leg rip off on me. Like I said, it's not that big of a deal. You're just going to set it into place and screw it in just like the other side, only at this seam you're going to need to tape and spackle that seam so you don't have cracking in the future. Now right here, you can see where I was a little bit long and so it folded up. Again, not a big deal. Molding is going to cover that. You're just going to take your razor knife, trim the excess off, and you're good to go.
and there you go. Now it's flush. You do have a gap there, but like I said, you're going to have trim just like this over top of that. You're never going to see it. It's an interior wall. There's no worry about air leak. You can see I've cut my lower legs to width. I'm going to screw them into place. And then you got your two bevel joints here so you can tape that seam and have a nice clean tape line so it hides in the paintwork. Same for the other side. I did have to notch out a little bit down here to get around the trim. Now I've cut my piece of joint paper to length. And I always wet my paper first to avoid a dry joint. Put some mud on there. Then go ahead and put your wet paper into place. Pull down to the end so it doesn't go anywhere. Mud over your joint. You also need to mud in all your screw heads. Basically just for this joint. You're gonna to wanna to put some mud in, wet your piece of joint paper, then put the joint paper over the seam and then mud over top of it. Lay down a bed of compound in the joint. Then we get our piece of wet joint tape Lay it over the joint. Come back over the top of it with some more joint compound. And we get our 10 inch joint knife. You come over that joint and dress it up. If your tape is pulling to the side, make sure you get it back over. It's important to do it while it's wet. Well, this particular job is not going to be a stage five sheetrock job where everything needs to be perfectly smooth and the walls need to be leveled out because the existing walls, you can see, have a knockdown texture. So don't stress yourself out trying to get everything 100% perfect because the knockdown is going to hide it. And also this particular job is inside of a closet. Now when it comes to the corners, you still need to tape then. You're still going to want to pre-moisten your tape. And then you can see where there's kind of a seam already down the center of the tape. And so you're just going to fold it over. That way you have yourself a 90 degree corner. You're going to pre-mud your corner. Then you're going to take your moistened tape. You're going to lay it in there. And then you're going to mud over the top of that joint. For this one, we're going to use a corner trowel. And there you go, you just smooth it out best you can on this first run, and then it dries. And you can go ahead and sand off the high spots as needed. Put your texture on, let that dry, and paint it. Job done.